Hey, it's time. Welcome in to the Business on Purpose podcast, the YouTube, the Facebook Live, uh, however you might be hearing this. My name's Scott Beebe. Always a delight to be able to be with you. Make sure that you know you can connect with us on and subscribe to our YouTube channel, our Facebook page. You can like My Business on Purpose there, and then, of course, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. So we've got channels all over the social media world, the internet to where you can connect with us and what we talk about every single week right here in the Business on Purpose platform. So make sure you connect with us there. Hey, I want to talk about the idea of pausing and taking a deep breath and the reality of what it means to come in first. So if you'll recall, for some of you here in the United States, last week, uh, the NFL players Miles Garrett and Mason Rudolph were locked in a really nasty tussle that left one with a bruised head and a bruised ego, and it left the other uh, with an indefinite suspension without pay. Get that, without pay. And I looked it up. His contract is said to be worth about $34 million over four years. Now, roughly 20 of that was guaranteed, so I don't know if he already got that or not. But the bottom line is him not being able to play the rest of the season and potentially some for next season, uh, my goodness, major hit from a financial standpoint. And in the same week, the ambassador to Ukraine, uh, William Taylor, the acting ambassador to Ukraine, read prepared testimony giving insight into questionable practices from high-ranking members of the United States government. And while the testimony was thoroughly prepared, clearly they had written it out, it's all kind of well uh, laid out, it spawned a news cycle reaction that was very swift. It was very biased. It was very opinionated. We actually saw some side-by-side -side snapshots of various uh, television coverages and cable news networks and what they were posting up there. I'll never forget watching a cable news network anchor standing outside of the United States Supreme Court after a judgment was written uh, as to the opinion of the court regarding the infamous hanging Chad ordeal in the election results of the contest between George W. Bush and Al Gore way back in December 13th. 2000. I'll never forget this. The on-site reporter was literally trying to interpret the written Supreme Court decision, no, no telling how many pages long this thing was, while he was on air. There was no preparation. There was no, no moments of sobriety. Just get it out and be the first to arrive. So they literally had this booklet of pages that they were working through going, okay, I think it says this. I think it says this. And so they were trying to synopsis and get it out first. What it helped me to realize is that we are obsessed with being first, because if you look back over this incident, one person wanted to dominate the other, be first. The whole reason that this incident came up in terms of the United States government and the ambassador to Ukraine is because there are a few people who want to be first in their elections. That's why this whole thing is bubbling up to the surface. In this, somebody wanted to be first in the election. <clears throat> and so we're obsessed with being first. In fact, yours truly uh, has been known to anticipate that moment. You know what I'm talking about. When the ticket agent picks up the handheld microphone just prior to welcoming group nine. <laughs> it seems to be the boarding group I tend to find myself in here recently. And it creates this mob rush to the gate door in preparation for boarding the aircraft so that we can grab the coveted overhead space in sports. We're losing our joy for the game in favor of coming in first. It used to be that we would sell out stadiums even when we had a 500 season. But now if one college team loses even just one game, they're, quote, out. I went back and looked at our beloved University of South Carolina Gamecock football team and the years that I had the privilege of playing there for them from 1994 to 1997. Some of you have recognized the Gamecock helmet here behind me. and That was actually my helmet while we played there. And I found that our record while I was there was 21 wins, 21 losses, and one tie. Wouldn't you know it? LSU. Dang, LSU. We played them the first year I was there and beat them by one point, 18 to 17. It was the day the cows came home. It's a whole other story I'll probably talk about at some point. But we were 22, 22, and 1. Listen, I'm under no illusion that the fans were not unsatisfied. But our attendance was pretty incredible through those years, even when we were average at best. Just this weekend, Baylor University after having a monumental run being undefeated through nine college football games, which is an incredible feat in and of itself, they lost in the last minute or two to Oklahoma, 
and the college football powers that be trounced them and bumped them way down into the rankings, all because they lost one game against a really, really good team. Why are we so obsessed with being first? I think we assume that first equals easy, recognized, and having the satisfaction of, quote, having arrived. And if I can get first, I get there. We really believe that first is going to fix things, that once we hit first, we'll get the respect. Once we get to first place, we'll get the credibility that we deserved. And then we realize that when we sit down and talk to men and women who have they've come in first in the past, while on the outside they'll tell you that it's the greatest moment of their life, many on the inside realize that it was the beginning of a new season that they don't particularly like. Of course, there's comforts that come with first. Uh, Possibly some big paydays, some awards, some recognition. If you sat with everyone who has ever come in first, you'll probably find a theme. That before coming first, so that moment when they were first, that before coming first moment was a lot more meaningful than the after coming first moments. Many men and women who have successfully sold their businesses, we would consider that in the business world kind of coming in first. Not many people get to do that successfully, where they actually get a good payout for the business. But many of those who have sold their business actually felt more significance while they were leading their business than they did upon selling their business with the contracted payout. So the money's in tow, but many times they felt less satisfied in doing that. So how can we appreciate life without having to have the constant need of coming in first. Because I think if we were to take an honest look at coming in first, uh, how many of you have closets filled with first place trophies? You came in first and you're still having arguments with your spouse. You came in first, but you're still frustrated at where you're at in life. Well, the reality is, is there's three things that we've got to kind of look at that I want to suggest that it's how we can appreciate the life that we have without having to constantly come in first. First thing that I want to recommend that we do is just pause. Start asking yourself realistically in the quiet moments, what, what's the point? What's the purpose? Pause. Remove yourself from the emotion of the moment and ask that question. Currently, that same University of South Carolina football team, uh, with different coaches and with different team members, of course, uh, they're sitting at a record of four wins and seven losses here in, at the time of this recording in 2019. They have been actively calling for the head coach, Will Muschamp, to be fired for weeks. And not only that, but Ray Tanner, the athletic director, to be fired. But what if we thought differently? What if we thought, well, who else is out there that if they fired the coach would be brought in? What would that do to our recruiting In fact, what about a deeper question? Is is Coach Will Muschamp really doing a bad job? It turns out last year, look this up, this was unbelievable. Last year, the University of South Carolina had the highest graduation success rate in college football. Not first, they actually came in fifth or sixth, but they had the highest graduation success rate in college football behind four Ivy League schools and Northwestern University, which might as well be an Ivy League school. They're not first. But wow, that's pretty impressive. In fact, they are first among graduating African Americans out of their program in the entire country. That's pretty good. So when we pause, we can think with greater clarity as to the full scope of information. I want to encourage you to begin to pause, have a mindset of pausing. The second thing that we can do to where we're not so obsessed in coming in first all the time is we can not only pause, but pause before each transition. Right before I came on to do this Facebook Live, this recording, I just, (sighs) I took a deep breath. The current research and literature sings in unison to this. Multitasking is a lie. Multitasking is a lie. Time blocking is a better way. In fact, just a couple of weeks ago at our email newsletter, we sent out a snapshot of what an ideal weekly schedule looks like. And if you're not a part of that, you can go to mybusinessonpurpose.com and you can choose any one of our resources that will serve to help you, our vision tutorial, our delegation roadmap, and you'll automatically be entered uh, to receive those weekly e-letters. We send out a lot of valuable information and we send out a snapshot of this ideal weekly schedule and it's built in time blocks. Multitasking does not work 
both in research and in my own experience, and not only in my own experience, but in your experience, because I hear from people just like you that it's not working, but the time blocking does. Of course, time blocking does not make us feel like we're coming in first. Multitasking makes us feel like we're coming in first. Time blocking makes me feel like we're having to say no a lot, and that doesn't make me feel like I'm in first. But the reality is, when I get to the end of my week or the middle of my Monday, I do feel like I'm in first when I'm time blocking because I'm able to to, to write this content that I hope serves you. But if I didn't time block, I wouldn't have time to do this. So as the day goes on today, I'm committed to pausing and at least taking a deep breath before transitioning into the next action or opportunity on my Monday checklist. And by the way, yes, I have a Monday checklist. It's right here. And you can see I've been marking through it all throughout the day. The third thing that I want you to realize in this, uh, this kind of mindset that we don't have to come in first to have a better life and what we're trying to do is we need to realize that being first comes with responsibility and burden and opportunity. Not just opportunity, but and opportunity. A friend of mine is a professional musician, and t- sometimes I think he's got the life, right? It seems like he came in first until I realize that he wakes up in a different city multiple days of the week, sometimes forgetting where he is because the crowds all look the same. Then realizing that even amidst all the lauding fans, my friend has zero flexibility in his schedule. A road manager decides his every time slot, and it's not up to him. A friend of mine has a cousin who is a NASCAR driver and is still young in his 30s. My friend got us passes recently and access to spend the afternoon with his cousin at the racetrack in his hauler and in his, uh, in his RV as well, leading up to one of the most famous races in all of NASCAR. This driver is a multimillionaire with major access, major relationships. And this driver spent his entire afternoon, in fact, we found spent his entire week and most of the weeks out of the 11 months of year beholden to sponsors and crew chiefs' timelines. His time is not his own, even though we look at him and think he came in first. It almost seemed as if he was bound by his own freedom. I want you to think about that, being bound by your own freedom. There are about 43 drivers on the planet that has the access that he has. So we would look at him and say, he came in first. And yet he's walking away from full-time racing this year because he's not in charge. There is a, there's an opportunity that comes with being first, but there is also a burden that comes with being first. So as you grow and as your business grows, make sure to pause, (sighs) breathe deep, find places of respite and spend time learning how to navigate your new responsibilities, your new burden and your new opportunity when you come in first, not the first of winning, but the first of having the opportunity to play the game. That's what I want you to do. I want you to consider it that you came in first simply because you get to show up and play the game today. Again, my name's Scott Beebe. Thank you as always for joining me. We started the Business on Purpose platform. At the time of this recording about five years ago, I wrote the book, Let Your Business Burn, Stop Putting Out Fires, Discover Purpose, and Build a Business That Matters earlier in 2019. And we host the Business on Purpose podcast. You can find this recording not only here, but also at our YouTube channel, on Facebook Live, and on the Business on Purpose podcast. And before you go anywhere else, if you need help and support in helping uh, liberate you from the chaos of working in your business, make sure to go to freedom.mybusinessonpurpose.com. That's freedom.mybusinessonpurpose.com. And we have got all of our coaching, what's called the Business on Purpose Roadmap, right there for you to be able to help liberate you from the chaos of working in your business. And also, we've got free tutorials, free resources right on the front homepage of our website. If you go to mybusinessonpurpose.com, you'll see those there. And then as always, you can go check out our book, Let Your Business burn. Hey, it's always a delight to be able to serve you here on a Monday. Thanks for joining us. And I hope that you won't be so obsessed with coming in first, but instead you'll be grateful for the opportunity to just be able to play the game and then give it your best, regardless of what place you come into, knowing that you're living out your mission to serve other people. Have a great week, everybody.